Welcome to a breaking news emergency edition of the Pat Mayo Experience. Bryson versus Brooks versus Tom Brady and Phil and Aaron Rodgers as well. It's all going to be covered and we had to bring in the staple of people to talk about this. But first, I need to let you know to smash the like button for the episode, subscribe to Mayo Media Network, and in the comment section, set a line for the new match. I haven't seen any odds on it as of yet, so you tell me who you think the favorite is going to be and what are their odds going to be. I am going to ask this to Jeff Feinberg. Right now, what do you think the line is going to be? Phil, Phil and Tom minus 130 opening line. Give me, Give me the other side. Rodgers has played in that Lake Tahoe stuff. I've seen him on TV. He's he's no slouch. It's going to be like a resort course. Bryson's going to tear it apart. Yeah, so that, that's my initial lean on it, too, is that whatever side Bryson is on, take Bryson. Like, I know Phil just won the PGA Championship, but in this sort of situation, and we saw Tom Brady play. He's not that, like, he's, he's good, but he's not, I can't imagine he's substantially better than Aaron Rodgers is. I mean, Ro- Rodgers plays in that Pebble Beach Pro-Am all the time, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know. Brady was pretty less than mediocre, but he got the shine from that amazing hole out, like mid trash talking with with probably Charles. So like he has that uh, like ultimate highlight that sort of overtakes any memory. Like that's my memory of Brady from that day, not playing poorly. It's the hole out. And I think people will hold that in the betting market versus versus Rogers. Uh, I briefly touch on this on tomorrow's show, or the second part of this podcast, if you're listening to it on a Thursday morning, uh, with Preston Johnson, uh, who I talk NFL futures, and Quan Young as well with uh, NBA futures too. So that's the second part of the, this audio podcast. They'll be their own separate video. So if you're watching this video right now, remember to tune back in tomorrow to Mayo, Me- Mayo Media Network. That's why you should subscribe and watch that show. Good betting information. Not a ton of good betting information on this show because of I mean, Jeff and I are, like, bad, but it gets worse. Because you know who's on the line? Tim Andergust! Tim Andergust. That's not my name. Oh, yeah, the guy who gave out no holes in one at the PGA who was dead right <laughs> about that. What terrible advice I'm out here giving. Yeah. Okay. You said the guy like never win. Guy, like that, guy who liked Adam Long before Pebble Beach. All kinds of stuff. Well, it's, yeah, good, no, it's, good that you, it's good that you liked Adam Long before Pebble Beach, considering he had won three weeks previous. So that didn't really do you any good, did it? Whichever tournament it was that it wasn't. You liked them after the tournament was over. You were rooting for Phil, as I recall. I'm always rooting for Phil. Hold on, Tim. You like everything. You've been sitting on wanting hole in one credit for for over seventy two hours. Well, because I didn't get it. <laughs> it like a minus one ten prop. I was mocked and harangued on this show for the very idea that there'd be no hole in one at an ocean course because yeah, they're, they're pros, man. Like just cause you can't hit a hole in one doesn't mean they're not going to. And they didn't. So anyway, but, but Tim, you make the same bet every single time and you lose 80% of the time. That's not true. It is I, true. We'll November go Masters, back and look at the there, results at the ma- November masters. I bet there would be holes in one and there were finally, you finally got one, right. But I, I think it oh, was the, no. I think it was the players uh, where you said not only would there be no holes in one, there would be, or maybe it was the masters this year. There wouldn't be two hole in one. And then people bet the, there will be two hole in one. They got paid like three to one on their money. Yeah. Well, you don't need to be a hundred percent as a tout, right? 55% is a good rate, but you're not at 55%. You're at like 5%. I'm also not a tout. That's, that's probably true. So I'm a, a man of the people. So here's my take, Jeff, and I want to run this one by you. There is a Twitter war or an Instagram war, whatever you're talking about here, between Brooks, Bryson, Tom Brady, Phil's getting in on the action. Aaron Rodgers is on vacation with his with his fiance and like Miles Teller, so he's kind of staying out of the entire thing. So we'll, <laughs> we'll see when he ends up coming into the situation. But here's the whole thing. There is a $40 million pool worth of money, Jeff, for the people who generate the most, by whatever algorithm and metrics the PGA Tour is using, to be the most influential people in golf. They will sh- 10 players will share in this pool of money. Bryson was already going to be in there. Brooks, I don't know if he was or not, but he's probably going to be in there now. I think this entire thing is coordinated so they can get this money. 
Okay, that's probably fair. I'd like to say one thing. Brooks would have gotten there. The stuff he's going to end up doing with Portnoy over the next couple months would have gotten him in the top 10. So I don't know that he would have had to force this. All I can say is I am 100% certain Brooks despises Bryson. Now, Brooks might be smart enough to be like, I hate this guy. I may as well profit off of it. Like we may as I may as well turn this into money if like I hate this guy and they both freaking love attention. Also, you've mentioned five people. Four of them are playing in a match here. One of them isn't, and it's Brooks Kepka. And in my personal opinion, I'm wrong a lot. But and I think I'm I think it's fair how Brooks probably feels. He probably feels a little disrespected and jealous. Bryson gets all this attention. This non-stop attention. Brooks always has to prove himself from the betting markets to, to, to like for whatever reason, it always feels like the media, even the non-betting golf media from the betting golf media, media, ha ha ha, uh, always seems to make Brooks prove himself. And he always proves himself and his trophy case is boss. So he's probably sitting there at home like F this guy. Why am I not in this rub? I don't know. I don't know why Brooks isn't. I guess it was it probably a lot of it had to do, honestly. Like the real reason that Brooks isn't playing in this is one, Bryson's a bigger draw. Bryson's a more notable figure. He's more not necessarily it's popular a, in terms of people liking him. But he's just a more known figure uh, when it yeah. comes to just the general public. And that's all this tournament is, this match. Yeah, it's all relationships. Like your agent could, Bryson might, Bryson's agent might have a better relationship with the people at Capital One. Like it could be literally as simple as that, who I believe is like, the host of the event and, and paying for it all. Therefore, probably the people making the wish list of who they want competing. Or they, um, or who's putting this on? Is it an NBC like Bleach, Bleacher Report type thing? Yeah, I think it's another one of those Turner Sport things. Yeah, so they were probably like, hey, let's put, can we get Tiger? Okay, no, he's not available. Can we get Spieth? Oh, he didn't want to do it. All right, yeah, it's either Ricky Fowler or Bryson. Those are our two next <laughs> options. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You you you're not wrong. But but I stand by Brooks. I am certain. I am certain there is a true dislike um for Bryson and he's going to decide to 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 make it off a of little money to build it to build up some fire just to stir the pot. Brooks, Brooks is a pro golfer. He probably want, loves the fact that ESPN is going to be talking about him and his sport tonight. Like, that is that is great. I don't know. Between Phil winning and this, like, holy, but like, what is going on, man? This is amazing. Well, there's, there's also, too, that Brooks was injured when they were planning this entire thing, that maybe they didn't know what his availability would be. Tim. Do you think this entire thing is set up? Because I'm starting to think that oh. that video that got released probably doesn't get released if Brooks doesn't be like, yeah, you can release that. Don't worry about it. That'll be good for me. No, I, I think Brooks is just actually too cool for all this stuff. I actually don't think he cares. He genuinely is not one of these phony people that needs to, you know, set things up in a particular way so that the dominoes fall. I genuinely think he's just a shrug it off sort of guy who does not care. He doesn't need to be as popular he doesn't want to be as popular as Bryson what he's going to do with Portnoy will be far more popular than anything that goes on with with, with that game and has the reach Probably. that he wants and the fans that he's interested in cultivating uh Brooks has a very different affect a very different way to approach the game and the sport and I actually think he takes its measure I, what he doesn't like about Bryson I think is that Bryson is an obsessive to a point where it's actually kind of embarrassing Whereas Brooks is sort of like too cool. He's like, yeah, I'm good and I practice, but life yeah. is made of things other than this. And so like, there's a clash of cultures going on here. Uh, and no, I, I don't think it's a setup. I think that's a bit too conspiratorial. Most of the time in this world, things are not set up. Things just happen organically. That's just the way of the world. Uh, and I think that's that it's pro very likely what happened here as well. Bryson is, I mean, sorry, Brooks, I agree. Like as much as I, and pro Bryson in like, if it actually became a thing, but really I'm just pro whichever guy I'll bet a roster. If I roster either of them in a week, like that's the guy I'm for that, you know, that's what it will come down to in the end. 
but but Bryce, I mean, we'd all rather be Brooks, a guy that seems like has sure. an, a, like the way better work life balance. Like he goes on vacation, he eats peaches, like he just having a good time. Bryson doesn't seem like he has time. Like everything is like solely focused on winning trophies. Brooks care seems to like you could debate how much he cares, but it's clear he puts exponentially less effort into it than Bryson because it comes naturally to him. He's more talented than Bryson is. Bryson has to work harder to get to his level. Brooks is the kid who doesn't have to study, can walk into the final exam and, and get a 93. You're Bryson right. can get yeah. a 93, but he's got to cr- cram, cram. Yeah. every single night. Miss and all Brooks the good times. That. Yeah. He Brooks knows good. Too. yeah. And but- he wants you to know that he knows that he doesn't need this stuff and it's actually kind of silly. And so, yeah, I mean, as time goes on, I find myself squarely on, on Brooks side. Brooks has a better perspective by and large in these sorts of things. I think Bryson is sort of like oh, Bryson. Br- Bryson has no perspective as far no, as much as I love Bryson. I think he is. And this is really like, people are going to hate me for doing this. Pat, which is why it's... Aaron Rodgers, right. Is the perfect foil here rogers has the same affect brooks does they are i am rogers and bryson are very very different people which is why brooks is taking the shot because brooks knows that rogers and he are sort of like are sort of like uh, spiritual cousins they're both like have other interests beyond just the sport they play and don't like they're 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 mr cool but and, what, but, uh, but but wouldn't the ultimate pairing in this be brady and bryson because they're essentially the same guy except Tom Brady has hired a much better social media team. Well, oh yeah. my God, where did he hide? Like, what's his meme guy get paid? Like, I, I don't. It has be... to be a ton because he's like his Instagram and Twitter are both fire. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out where the kid came from. Like Brady went to Tampa. He took his favorite Patriot social media guy. He's always seeming like it seems like even deep into his Patriot run, he had his own social media guy team. So I don't know. That kid is fire. Great for. <laughs> Great for Tom. I mean, he, maybe he hired. Uh, oh, this wouldn't mean anything. Never mind. Like Norm Kelly, inside joke for for Tim. Does Tim even get that? I know who Norm Kelly is. No, he had this like it was like this really obnoxious thing in the city I lived in. Never mind. That was really dumb and stupid. I think Bryson. I do believe Bryson lacks total self awareness, though. Oh, totally. Like he puts out these corny videos. I don't think he realizes how corny they are. Like, I, I think he's also very genuine in his weirdness. Yeah, I, I don't think he's, he's, you know who he reminds me of, Jeff? Nope. The other guy on the line. Who? I guess he lives his own truth. It's all like, it's hard to, ch- yeah, I could, sure. I guess I don't no, know. No, but Bryson is an obsessive tryhard that has to try hard. Uh, this all comes naturally to me. <laughs> like, I'm far more like Brooks. Oh my god! And you know, you can't even grow the same bad goatee that Brooks currently has, and that would take you like seven months, and it would still be horrible. The funny thing I about just... Th- just the funny thing about this prayer, like thinking about Brooks and thinking about Bryson, I I do think that there is somewhat of a calculation to it because. There is this prize pool worth of money. I think they both want their hands in that. And I think the people higher on that list in terms of who gets the most social media attention, everything that goes along with it gets more money out of it. I don't think it's just split 10 ways with the $40 million. I think if you're higher on that list, you get a bigger cut of it. But it also is all we've ever asked for is golf to embrace some more like WWE mentality. And this is the first time I can ever see it happen. But you say like Brooks or Bryson is an obsessive and that makes him very off putting. And that Brooks is this too cool for school guy. He has all this natural talent. Aren't we just basically describing Tiger and Phil? No, uh, both of those guys were obsessives. Tiger yeah. was a legit obsessive. Yeah, but Phil was too, and Phil is now worse than he ever was. Yeah, Phil. He, Phil, he, Phil is now like <laughs> if Phil had done now what he is doing now twenty years ago, he'd probably have like twelve majors. Yeah, yeah but Phil's Phil like Brady walking around with days, multiple right? drivers at a major like twenty years ago, and walking around with seven wedges in his bag. Like he was doing weird stuff and obsessive stuff too. Like not to Bryson level, but like he wasn't sort of just like the debonair uh, guy that Brooks is and. and 
also when you talk about the the social media stuff there's a reason that jeff has stopped talking about justin rose he doesn't want to do anything to contribute to rose's uptake honestly rose's no listen rose had a nice week last week i don't even see when I don't even see the row stuff. It gets dropped to me by carrier pigeons. I swear to God, I don't follow him anywhere. But when he does something, you think like I'm worried. Like if there's a summer afternoon, I'm going to think and he does something corny on the Internet. I'll see my mentions and think like Herbert got hurt. Like that's what happens. That's how many um, I get. I, I don't know. I'm just in love with everything that's happening. And as much as Brooks might have the wherewithal to play it up, I do believe there's a genuine dislike there. And it's like any office. I mean, Pat, I've worked with you in an office. Like I can make that meme of like who I guessed you would make that face when you were doing something and that person came by. We all have that. You know, I golf at a club. Like I could relate to Brooks in the sense that like there's this one guy who like I can't stand like just the sight of them drives me nuts. I don't think about him when I'm not there. Like I, so like the notion that he's living in my head is probably unfair, but when I freaking see him like, Oh, you like, you know, so I don't know, maybe I, you know, we've all had fun with it, but um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's great. I'm so fired up. Like I'm going to do a show tonight not even to date this, but I don't even like want to talk about this week's event, Pat. There's so many like overriding stories in golf right now. It's great. Well, I think Bryson is living rent free in Brooks's head at the moment. And Brooks made a tweet about it. And Brooks made an Instagram story about it. He's really trying to lean in. And this kind of goes back that it's very clear. Tom Brady has a social media team and Bryson does not. He's just on his phone. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. He's not great. He's not a professional social media person. <laughs> no. Tim- and, and I bet you like uh, Brady. Yeah, exactly. Brady's got hordes of them. If Brady needed extra opinions, like I'm sure Portnoy would, would rent Brady his like um, 22 year old editorial room. Tim, you know, Tim, do you think that you could be Bryson's social media person? I think I would basically be writing the same tweets that he <laughs> Other than I, when I saw his tweet today, I would have tweeted out the gif from uh, uh, Mean Girls. Why are you obsessed with me? Rather than what he wrote. But I don't think, and I'm dumb enough to think that Bryson, I think Bryson's obsessed with Bryson. And Brooks is like, just can't stand the guy. But I don't think Bryson can't stand Brooks to the level Brooks can't stand Bryson. Bryson strikes me as a person who doesn't hate anyone. Like he is that yeah, sure. he isn't self-involved to the point where everyone else is just kind of neutral to him. Yeah, he's so self-absorbed in like his task-oriented life that he doesn't pay any attention. I said this before, but I'll go as far like to say it again. And I, you know, someone should say the moment you say, like, I know nothing, you should probably stop talking. So I should now probably stop talking. But I believe Bryson is on that, like, ge- like on the spectrum, but also a bit of genius. Like, I think there's, like, a touch of the Asperger's in, in Bryson. But it's also the part, he also got the part that makes you, like, part genius and amazing. But I think his social, like, norms and awareness are non-existent. Or he is operating on a level just beyond what, he's playing 4D chess right now. Oh, and and he, and he And he knows that this is the... When he was like, if you're someone like Bryson and you put all this work into your body to change the game and talk about it and talk about how you're a quote unquote scientist and all this stuff. And he put in the hard work to do all of it. Like he's not stupid. We know that. And maybe he sees this as his, the best niches, whether it be a wrestling gimmick or any sort of gimmick. And this feels like a gimmick to a certain extent or some extension of your real life. That's just really overblown that maybe he doesn't care how he comes off, but he knows that trying to be like non self-aware Bryson is just a really good marketing strategy for him because it works because people love Bryson. And there are so many people that hate his guts and want to root against him. He is one of the few golfers that isn't tiger. That isn't Phil 
on that level where he just draws attention. Like you, emotion. Tim, he you can almost an emotion. Tim, yeah. you, you, you watch like PTI and all those shows that like don't cover golf ever. It, it's almost like in hockey. Like you just don't see it in hockey ever that unless someone gets like a Donald Brashear stick to the back of the head, then they're not talking about hockey. Bryson's one of the few golfers that can penetrate like the first lock on PTI just by being Bryson. To a degree, I actually don't think he has that much sway yet. I think that's still Phil and Tiger and only Phil and Tiger that can Spieth. break into that top. I Unless Spieth has won a tournament, I don't think Spieth can break into that either. Uh, Fair. Like golf is still, as popular as it's getting, it's still quite niche. And oh, there's a couple of names that, that move the needle in terms of like the, the A block of PTI. Bryce is not there yet. Uh, Brooks is not there yet, but Brooks doesn't, need to, doesn't want or need to be there. Yeah, but Br- Brooks is never going to be there unless Brooks wins the PGA Championship or the Masters. And maybe the Portnoy stuff will get him there. He's trying, but there's weird stuff Brooks can do. And I agree with you with Speed. Unless he wins, they're not going to talk about Jordan Speed because there is no real personality. Like Fowler was the closest thing that we have. He's just not that good anymore. Bryson's legit. He's one of the world's best players. He's an absolute weirdo. Yeah, he is a weirdo. And I think Brooks is like reminding Tiger was a weirdo no how too, hard though. Work. Right? Like, I mean, we could looking back, like Tiger's a weirdo, was a weirdo. Like he seems to be in a much healthier mental space. Well, clearly there was a period where you know, it was bad, but I even made a joke on Twitter today, Pat. I can't wait to tell my grandkids about how golf was saved in Tiger's third um hiatus. Is this gonna get to the point where Brooks and Bryson are paired together at some event outside of a major, but it happens in the morning and we don't get to watch it because that maybe this is what we need to get cameras on every single hole is like these guys not being on the coverage. Doesn't the U the, the USGA can be cheeky. They've done short guy. They've done fat guy. They've done glasses guy, group bald guy. Like they do things right. They've, they've had to apologize in the past because like they've gone kind of overboard. Um, with things, I think maybe like the fat guy group kind of set some people off, <laughs> but well, they have like a standard ro- role, right? It's like past champion with like US Am champion. So I don't think like even if they want to be funny, like I feel like they have an out to avoid the pairing. Yeah, but like, I mean, the past champions usually with the US Am champion. And maybe even like the reigning open champion or oh, something. Oh man, I would feel bad for the the US Am champion because I mean Brooks is a former champ, Bryson's the defending champ. So those two plus the the US amateur <laughs> champ. <laughs> like who is the ideal what, third? Who is the who is the ideal what, third guy for that group? Is it Reed? I said if he's in the tournament, it's Steve Stricker. It's just a, yeah, but they're both making the team, so that doesn't matter. Yeah, but just well, it like, doesn't matter because if you remember when Watson coached that team, there was such division that he couldn't keep the team together and they got crushed. Right now, and I'm not the first to say it, like Team Europe is sitting pretty. Uh-oh. Like you would love to look at the dysfunction in the American side that they're sowing and think, great, they're just going to rip themselves apart again because that's what they do. There was division on the Furic team too, right? Like Reed got all hissy pissy when he got, when him and Speed got broken up. Uh, yeah, Phil kind of went off on the Watson team. Uh, and it was great. One of the funnier takes was like Padraig. He's watching, he's having like a scotch watching these two guys hate each other. And Phil just made the team <laughs> points for Padraig. It's tough. It's tough. I wouldn't want to be Steve Stricker right now. He would actually be a good third person, although I don't think he's qualified for the U.S. Open. He'd be a good third person. Well, I don't know who... Th- who, well, let's try to figure out who it is. Do you, like, do you put super like nice neutral guy in it? Do you put Phil in that group? Like, why not, put, Gary, why not put Gary in there and have the last three champions of the U.S. Open in there? Nah, that's well, no. Then fun. they might have to. That's... Like, if they actually do that, Tim. Like, if they actually decide they want to put them together, they put Gary in there. That's like how they could vocally like justify it. Yeah, like, oh no, all we did was put the last three champs in. I think that I think that I mean if the US I mean the USG 
you, no one likes the USGA. So now that NBC has the rights to the US Open buying it from Fox and they want to push this Peacock Prime or the fuck it's called that you have to go on to actually stream these earlier groups that I can see NBC putting some pressure on the USGA be like, look, we did you a solid buying you out and giving you this platform. Uh, why don't you do us a favor and let us pick this Bryson Brooks group and let us pick a third to throw in it. Fuck, throw Would speed, that alter th- your throws, desire to throws, bet either of them? No, not at all. I'm just curious. Um, I think you should put a third guy in there, Pat, like a Bubba who would be willing to like troll needle the whole day, like both of them, like a fun guy who would like play it up. Tiger would have been amazing. Like well, he, well, he, he gets too serious probably at a major. What would Mickelson that. do? Mickelson would be amazing too. Just won the PGA. You have the reigning PGA champ. You have the reigning U.S. Open champ and the reigning Phoenix Open champion. Is there even like a snarky Euro? Like someone that oh, just Oh, like... can, we, can we just put Poulter in the group and give him a headset? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or or Garcia. Yeah. No, Garcia yeah. wouldn't be as fun. Garcia is like too... Uh, Poulter's like a fun upset all the time. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. There's got to be a Euro that would just like um, troll the whole day. Stenson or something. Like a naturally funny guy. Or you just put in Hatton and he'd just be mad the entire... Well, how about this? Like a realistic pairing, those two in Rom. Just chuck them all together. Or 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 throw Dustin in because doesn't he have beef with Brooks too? Yeah, apparently they did. I don't know the story that they fought, right? Or something. I don't know, man. It's hard to well, keep Brooks, up who Brooks, Brooks has got a beef with. At Harding Park, remember? DJ was the, the 54-hole leader and Brooks basically just asserted that Dustin was going to fall apart and this is what he does at majors, blah, blah, blah. Now he did, but, but Brooks did worse. I wouldn't really say he, he fell apart. He actually played he quite well. Second, Bo- right? Bo- Bo- Brooks fell apart. Brooks fell apart. Yeah. Brooks like wasn't on TV after the second hole. Yeah. He shot himself out of that tournament. Yeah. I mean, DJ was in still in the hunt, but again, he did lose the 54. Yeah. Hole. But I think Brooks's comment then was along the lines of like, no, nah, there's no, like he's only got one major. He doesn't scare me or something like, uh, sounds right. Well, but look, Brooks is a killer. He's the, he's the, he's the, he's yeah. that tiger in the middle of the room, right? Not like tiger woods, but like the actual, like tiger, like the Bengal <laughs> will get you. And like, that's why I respect the guy. He's like, he's cool. And he knows he's cool. And he's not afraid to let you know that you can't get to his level. Like Bryson could work as hard as he wants, be as cool and you know, be as successful as he wants, and have all these cool videos, blah blah blah. Brooks can just swat him away with one flick of his wrist, and Brooks wants him to know that. I don't know if that's necessarily the case at this point. There's an Instagram story right now, Jeff, from Bryson that is the picture of Brooks going like this, and it's a picture of Bryson photoshopping himself onto his hat, giving the thumbs up. <laughs> I, and there's something kind of endearing like about David uh, Lynch. It sounds like something David Lynch would come up with. Yeah, exactly. They, yeah, Bryson, he's just working on different levels here. There's something endearing about this Bryson stuff to me. I don't, I, I don't know why. I think it's because I feel like I know it's him doing it. Oh, I, think I, I like, agree. I agree. I agree with that for sure. He might have one other guy in the room. Like, what should we do? What should we type? What should I type? But yeah, he's typing it. I agree. Yeah, no, I I agree with all of that. Like, there is something endearing about Bryson. Like, he he does have, he's like far more the everyman. He's proof positive that you can do anything you want to if you set your mind to it. Like, there's some, there's like a role model aspect to that. I mean, let's let's not pretend like Bryson isn't one of the most legit prospects in golf history, kind of like as a junior, as an amateur, as a college player, and coming out. Like he, yeah, was on, he, he was on the he, level he, of Tiger and Jack in terms of what he had accomplished. Sure. But he didn't think that he could do what he needed to do the way he was. He didn't and think he could do what Bryce Brooks was doing and dominating he that run of majors. He wasn't. He hadn't had a top 10 in a major. He was no, right. but I mean, like physically, he to make a radical change. I mean, like the style of play required to, to be a super elite. Yeah. He didn't believe he had that, that ability. He didn't. He was a very complete player, but he didn't have that ceiling. Um, what All those guys in the top five of the world did one thing that he wasn't doing, which was off the tee at that yeah, time. Absolutely. So, Tim, what are you going to cap the match at right now? Yeah, Jeff laid out a good number there. I might have laid a little bit more wood. I might have laid like minus 145 for Phil. 
and uh, and Tom Brady. How is I'm going to lose all my money betting on Bryson in this, aren't I? Well, you should almost always take the underdog in these sorts of things because, like, why not? You're getting a pro with another pro, and like, who knows what the amateurs are going to do that day? Like, you you could never predict it. So you're probably smart taking whom whomever is plus money. I think I just, it would strike me as odd that a top five player in the world would be an underdog to Phil Mickelson, who's fifty, who just won the major won a major championship. That's fine, just, but when was the last time before last week that Phil beat Bryson? The Masters, I, the PGA Championship. I think he's like two and seventeen against him in the last few times. I have no, it out. I don't know, but people are going to like people like Tom Brady, people like Phil. They're going to bet on him. That's good. Maybe we can. Get I, I mean. Maybe we get a bigger line. Yeah, maybe. But I mean, I, I don't know how much handle events like this really get. A lot. Like, That's the whole purpose. for The only reason that these things exist basically coincided with legalized sports betting in America. They're literally yeah, like a two hour. They're a, they're a they four have- hour commercial for the title sponsor. And they're about gambling. Yeah. But remember, the other two times they happened. One was the day after Thanksgiving. Uh, which is a pretty dead day for sports. and then Exactly. The time, so it's all to it yourself. Did, it's, the, it's the one thing that you can gamble on. But this is not in that time of year. And what? then the other one, this is in July. I think it's July 6th. Sure. Uh, but they, they, and what's going on? What else is going good, on July 6th? Good. It's like two weeks before the Open Championship. There's Wimbledon. There is baseball. There is lead up to the, uh, the uh, NBA Finals. Uh, there is lead up to the Olympic Games. Like it's not a dead dead spot in the calendar the way that May was last year when there was nothing on uh, because of the pandemic. Or two years ago it was the day after Thanksgiving. Uh, viewership and handle will almost certainly be down for this event. I very much no, I, I very much do not. I did, handle will not Tiger's be down not, for it. Yeah, it almost certainly will be. Tiger's I mean, not involved. I mean, what what do, you think, what do you what do you think that the handle was on the one last year? I do not know. But so so how Tiger, are you comparing them? Because Tiger's not in it. I don't know if I need any other comparative stick, even though I made the case for the time of year. The lack of Tiger, I think, is what does it. And I, Rogers is going to spend the four hours using a couple opportunities to make that organization uncomfortable. <laughs> who was it who was like the sideline reporter last time? Was it Justin Thomas? It was JT. Yeah. Like, again, J- nothing going on in the world at that point. Yeah, I can't. doubt he'll, he'll be doing that. Oh, they probably don't want to let him next to an open mic at this point either. Well, that's a, <laughs> that's a fair point. But just there's so much going on like that time of year that if you're not playing in it, why would you be there? On a um, bit of a sideways note, guys, the Phil win might have one enormous payoff for everybody when all is said and done. It might have scary enough that it might have that it might have been needed the scene the 18th green just everything that's magic, but that win might be the final straw that will get um, that will get CBS or NBC to pay him what he wants because someone a golf reporter made a comment about it that you know that that the talks were happening and real and people kind of balked at Phil's price what it would take for him to do the booth work. Remember how good he was at Harding Park? Yeah, yeah, everyone acknowledges it. And he kind of wrote back at ship, like, uh, be careful what you wish for. Like, with, uh, you know, like, I think that's something that is on the table with more steam. Now, it's sad because the guy just won a major. I don't think he's rushing to get in the booth. But I swear, I think it it really, like, reignited the, the world sentiment for this man and the networks noticed. I think in the end, if I had to bet, he's going to do one of these jobs one day and get paid what he wants for it. Well, I, that would be great if we live in a world where we have Faldo, who is very bland, except when he's cheering for Englishmen, and we have Azinger, who doesn't know what he's talking about. Like, at least when we had Johnny, we had somebody interesting and insightful and not afraid to be critical. We got nothing now. I don't think you're going to see Phil in the booth. Maybe for the select event or anything like that. Or he'll have the uh, the Mike Weir TSN job where when he misses the cut at the Masters, maybe he'll go into the booth at that time. But like you just said, the, the unintended consequence of Phil winning this major is that he's in all the majors for the next five years. Oh, yeah. I'm not even looking at this oh, as a short-term on. play. Maybe when he's 60. I don't know. But I, I think One of the he... first things he mentioned, because I watched like four hours of post- PGA Championship coverage on Golf Channel because I was so fired up that I couldn't do anything else. 
And like in the press conference, like the, one of the first things he mentioned was how he doesn't need that special exemption anymore. And he's got five years to take a crack at, uh, at a couple of home courses for him in, in Torrey and in Shinnecock Hills that are in that rotation of courses he'll get to see. It's exciting. Is he allowed back at Shinnecock Hills? <laughs> <laughs> That's a fair, fair point too. Oh, let's see. Brady is tweeting out more memes. I do enjoy that. Like the, like the sentiment is almost a hundred percent like anti Bryson with how lame he's being. But I do enjoy that. Like the golf writers are like, look how lame Bryson is like not realizing themselves that they're the lamest people on earth. I just don't think they want to get on Brooks's bad side or what? I just don't think they want to be on his the, getting his wrath. He can be incredibly terse at these events. We saw it last week. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a vindictive soul. Sort He's of like Aaron Rodgers. It's not worth Again, it. Another reason that he and Aaron Rodgers would be a match made in heaven. Bry- Bryson, yeah, I think he like doesn't even like notice who made fun of him, like or who did something. I don't think Bryson Unless cares. It's like goes super viral. Like just the amount, and that's why I think this is a bit of a work. It's just the amount of now seeing Bryson get in on the action that I just don't think that he would care either way, unless there was some sort of profit to be made from this. You are right. It doesn't seem like he's the type of guy that would like, he could be lifting weights or, or working on something right now. It doesn't or, seem like. Or social media is incredibly addictive and people just pop off sometimes because it's fun. Oh, I know that feeling. Right? Like that, that, that explains things more often than it doesn't. Just you're caught up in the moment and you have something snarky to say and you just shoot off. I, I would agree with you on that, but it just seems like where Bry- like just the way that we've talked about Bryson this entire time, how calculated he is. And like the, even the weird videos that he puts out where he's like playing video games without a shirt on and like weird stuff like that. It's all so calculated that he doesn't strike me as the type who would do that kind of thing. It seems like if there's a, there's a reason that he's going after it right now and whether it's to troll Brooks or they're secretly in on it together, or if it's just to get a piece of the $40 million and move himself to the top of that list, then I think that's why he's doing it or, or he's getting, or they told him like whoever's broadcasting this thing. Hey, Hey, maybe it's like a Floyd Mayweather deal with all four of these guys. Maybe Brooks has a piece of it too. Who knows that if they sell a, that they get a certain rake off the number of pay-per-view subscriptions that they sell to this thing. Maybe, but it's Occam's razor. The simplest solution is almost always the correct one. These people are just shooting off and don't like each other. And uh, it's kind of fun. And that's all there is to it. I, th- I don't know that there is any sort of conspiracy underpinning any of this stuff. It all feels too calculated from every side. I don't know. I agree. Even Brady's involvement. Yeah. Brady's like some, person. some Brady is going to like tell person. his employee meme guy like to go off on it today, like just for shits and giggles. Like and there's a plan here. It feels like so you know? saw it happening and said, well, get me into the mix somehow. Does that sound like Tom Brady to you? <laughs> I, mean, it is, I don't know. <laughs> so the way, the way, the way that I have conceived this in my head, what's going on right now. So there's this $40 million pool. Brooks and Bryson are trying to get their biggest piece of the pie with it. And maybe that they're seeing like this has caught fire and now they're pressing to go into it. And then they enlist the help. And especially with coincided with the match being delivered right now and Brady's involvement in it, that maybe that there is a like certain cut of the money generated from both the sponsorship, the TV, whatever it might be from this golf event, uh, that Brooks and Bryson and Phil, you know, give up a, actually, I mean, Brooks isn't involved with it, but Bryson and Phil, maybe Brooks, they're like, Hey Brooks, we'll cut you in a little bit. We'll cut Brady in, uh, to some of the pool and just do a bit of a money exchange right now that, these guys, like I said, these guys aren't stupid, and they're fucking professional golfers. All they care about is money, so that would only make sense to me. I, I don't think Bryson is driven by money. They're, they're professional uh, golfers. That's what they do. Most people actually aren't driven by money, and I don't think he is either. I think he actually is driven by the desire to be better than others. If that if that was the case, he wouldn't be in those Bridgestone commercials. Well, to say that you aren't driven by money doesn't mean that you're an ascetic who hates it either. But I don't think that's his prime but even, motivation. Even Not being in those commercials, it's it like I, it's as much a part of being like a brand ambassador and a status symbol amongst your peers in the game who yeah, get I that agree. sort I agree. of um, privilege of, of like one of these preeminent brands wanting to make them the face of of them. But I, I yeah, I don't know. Bryson's after a lot of things. Money is part of it. It's all part of it. It's all. 
strive to be great. The money comes with it. Like, I don't know. The guy got on a plane and went home, thought he missed the cut, and he finished T10. Like, freaking the man. <laughs> All right. Anything else you guys want to talk about? Oh, Jeff, uh, I didn't get this story from Tim yesterday. I was thinking about oh. saving it for a cuss corner, which we do have one in the bag, by the way, if people are wondering. So that'll be coming out soon. You know those like weird beads that Tim had on the back of his seat that the ca- cab drivers have in his car? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're not there anymore, and Tim wouldn't tell me why. <laughs> I did sort of explain it to you, but I didn't want to embarrass myself. What happened was, see, those things are only made out of beads and like fishing line, right? And so one day when I had gotten out, the seat was not perfectly like in the seat where it should be. It was like it was pulled tight to some degree, Uh, like the like the seat was above, like the the beads were resting above the seat and I didn't notice. And so when I got in the car quickly and sat down on it, snap. (laughs) A bunch of the fishing uh, wire gave way, like four or five of the pieces. Well, at that point, the thing is ruined. Uh, I looked at it and said, could I, could I darn this back together? Uh, but no, I, 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 I could not. So that's what happened, is that I got out of the car too quickly, and so the seat wasn't sitting normally, because I usually would straighten it, but I didn't. And then I got back in the car too quickly, and there was too much strain, because it's pulled pretty tight, and I just, anyway, that's what happened. Should have made it. Why did you have to tell the story? Like, I wasn't going to tell the story. Well, I wanted to hear the story. You wouldn't tell me the story. I figured if I got I you on the show, you, it, you, you, you said that it wasn't there anymore. You said it had something to do with fishing wire. You didn't tell me the whole story. <laughs> well, I based, no, I, I think I told you more than that. But like, I didn't want to go into detail because, like, who needs to know what happened to my seat cover? I'm sure, it's happened to everybody. Yeah. Yeah, there's one thing you see that, that that's why you're like Bryson. I'm sure it's happened to everyone that my beaded seat cover which no one has used <laughs> since the 1970s just explodes on you when you sit on it yeah that, that's a regular well, that is a regular occurrence for everyone tim just because of the weird angle at which the seat cover was in when i got on it that's all right any I'm final sure. any final thoughts here jeffrey no i think that's good i'll go i just i'll just close it like on a personal note to say bolt up no, yeah, the internet should stop teasing Charger fans about Julio. Like, the Chargers haven't even called Atlanta. I promise you. Guaranteed. Yeah, it would be awful if people photoshopped Julio into a Chargers jersey and started tweeting that at Jeff. That'd be awful. No, I don't care. I mean, they're just being driven by a betting line to make me think that we're, like, in or part of this. I don't think we've made a call. I, I go. I went over the odds with Preston and Quan on, like I said, the second half of this audio pod or in the video that's coming out on Thursday. Who do you think is the actual team? Because the Falcons right now are five to one. I said the Colts to somebody earlier this week, and I stand by that. I think the Titans will end up being the most desperate. Because to me, with what they have being at like a running back into that next contract and Tannehill. I feel like they're the one whose like window is most up against it for the teams that are kind of in this conversation. Everyone else seems like their arrow is in many ways beyond this year. Like even the Patriots, like they just drafted a quarterback 15th overall and acquired a lot of young offensive players. Um, you know, Washington, Baltimore, the Titans is the one that, in my opinion, they feel the most like they really need it. They really need it because it feels like their window might close on them fast. I think that makes sense. Thank you for being on the show, Jeff. I just called you up out of nowhere and then I texted Tim Andergust. Tim Andergust. Not my name. And you were just available to jump on. So I thank you for that. I guess in closing, though, do you think this is going to be like in a mu- in two months from now? Is this like just a forgotten way? Like, remember, like when we spazzed for three days about this? Yeah, I mean, that would be everything on the Internet ever. <laughs> Every 72 hours, the thing that you couldn't believe happened is like, oh, yeah, that happened. Yeah. The, the biggest thing would be is to get these guys in a pairing or doing something together as quickly as possible. So it's not out of people's minds before like at least a tournament or even if it is the u.s open or the pga in some way needs to capitalize on this because you need to like phil 
Phil's not going to be at every PGA Championship winning the event. Like, And this was my whole point about the broadcast when it came to Sunday. Yes, people tuned in to watch Phil. We know that. But you so rarely get such a wide net with a Phil or a Tiger winning something to draw all these eyes that wouldn't normally be there, that you need to build up stars somehow. And these are probably your two biggest ones along with Spieth right now. You know, you made a great point. Like, Harry Higgs is a nobody. But he'll stay a nobody if he's doing great things and you don't let anybody know. And that's Harry about Higgs. it. Yeah. Harry Higgs, Tim's Tim's yeah. British buddy who doesn't exist. Uh, but like Harry Higgs is like a legit character, like a real personality on the PGA Tour. And the fact that they buried him and buried Ricky on Sunday against all like Phil walking down the fairway. And you wouldn't have to take anything away from Phil. You still would have got to see all the Phil you wanted. But that's like a legit story. Someone like Harry Higgs playing himself on a Sunday at the PGA Championship championship to get into the masters for the next year his first time ever like that's a legit story for a guy who's like the 200th ranked player in the world like cbs is all about the storylines and all about the drama that's a storyline a good storyline and it had real drama especially after he missed the green on the 72nd hole and had to get it up and down for par ricky was in exactly the same situation where he had to get it up and down for par on the 72nd hole and he gets into the masters if he makes that putt he doesn't make the putt what they do show it 20 minutes after it happened and didn't even talk up that storyline, which I feel like is something that the audience would have cared about. Well, the point about the 20 minutes afterwards is sort of neither here nor there. Like, if you don't know what happened, and the vast majority of people watching the PGA on that Sunday had no idea that that was 20 minutes previous, that that's kind of not important. They, they, they showed it, so that, that was the important thing. But I think the Higgs stuff is well put. But ESPN actually showed quite a bit of his round earlier in the day when he was playing early, so. Chances? Covered it a bit. But again, like, you know, they, if they're not showing Phil and the leaders, like, people are, like, freaking out that they're not seeing the leaders, and they'll flick away. Yeah, but they're, but, but, but it's not like they're not showing the leaders, though. Like, that's the whole thing. Like, in between, there is a good five minutes in between, or more, in between shots. And I'm not saying when only show Phil when he's hitting, or anything like that, but there's a noticeable gap where literally nothing is happening. When people talk about golf being boring, that's what they're talking about. It's not... Like, you could be cutting away to different things. It's like when they should be showing shots and they're showing some sort of stupid, like, pre-production package. Well, from you CBS. know how I feel about it. Yeah. You need to have a couple of those. It's a television show. It's not just about shots. There's other things that you need to show. Well, how would we know it's not about shots? Because they never show shots. They do, well, they do. No, show. they don't. They don't show what you would like. I understand that you want nothing but shots. I, 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 I don't want nothing but shots. I want storylines as well, but to pretend that there's one storyline going on a golf tournament is absurd. Well, I, I agree. I agree with you there, but don't you trust that the people there who are pretty well paid and have been around the sport for a long time have a clue as to what they know their audience wants? No, absolutely. Absolutely. No, no. the so answer is touch. absolutely not. The fact that they've yeah. been there for 35 fucking years is the problem. Yeah, I agree. They are, putting on, they are right putting on putting on a 1989 television broadcast. Yeah, true. With, with that, a shot with a shot trasher and a drone. That's a, that's what you know. Yeah, 89 with shot tracer and a drone. But 89. My question 89. would be: Isn't that what those that what people want? No, it's changing. It's changing. Yeah, but those yeah, are the yeah. people that pay for cable. So you could be right on that. On or, ne- or those are the people that. Well, I guess it's network TV anyway. It's network TV, but all the money right now is going to be like the broadcasting rights came up. That's fine and everything like that. But I mean, CBS is in a precarious situation because they, I guess they have Paramount Plus they could sell it to. Uh, I don't know how the streaming rights work for it, but I'm uh, just getting more cameras on. At least you can push people to a product you actually have to pay for and really generate a lot of money that way. And eventually all the people who enjoy the broadcast how it is right now are going to be dead in a few years because they're all fucking 90 years old. I don't think that that's true either. I it, think people in their like 50s and 60s do appreciate this type of coverage. And I mean, I'm like, I, I don't think that they want it exactly the way it is. I think you are right that particularly there are certain things they could change. But I actually don't think the whole structure, you can indict it because that's what people want. No, but well, how do you know it's that's what that. people want? Tim, I would you, say... You think that any way that they present something to you is how people want it. No, no people don't want it that their... way. That is what people are used to seeing because that's all they fucking get. Tim, unequivocally, in my opinion, if we're talking major sports and you could debate you know, PGA in that anyway, there's not a league or a fan base of that is 
like hardcore golf fans are alienated. PGA tour fans are alienated more than any fans of any league in all of sport. So when I say that KFC is alienating me as a fan, <laughs> you know, you, you, who cares, right? Cause you're never going away. The PGA is alienating you, but you're never going away. You're right. Watch they know time. that. They know how they got it, my click. How is it any different than the indictment you make against me? And I don't my, know. I'm a hypocrite. Yeah, I don't it. have a clue. I don't know. It is because we're actually arguing the opposite things. We are mad that it's constantly staying the same and not evolving with the times, where you're mad that they're trying different things despite having <laughs> the same thing available to you anyway. Well, not just change, but like foregrounding things that I don't want to see foreground. That has nothing to do with what we're talking about. You a healthier planet? You, 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 you're not behind a healthier planet? I think there's a happy medium here between what we've got and what Pat wants that we get to. I, what, and like, more, more so what I'm talking about is probably best as a second screen observation. I, I agree. I, I agree with that. But I do think that this CBS broadcast is hilarious. Like, NBC does such a better job than CBS at covering golf. And they don't even do a great job. Just compared to, like, CBS does a horrible job at it. Pat, do you know that in this, I'm sure they'll have it the whole playoffs. Not that you would give a crap. Um, Sportsnet has like their leaf super fan doing watch alongs, which our buddy drew is producing. Yeah, Like like, it's not for me. It's not how I would want to watch that game, but I think that makes total sense. Like all teams like could have that. And I think there's a total market for that sort of thing. Just well, the referee cam. That's the leaf super fan cam. It would just be whatever the referee is seeing on the ice. Oh, I <laughs> forgot about you. Uh, d- does it make, uh, does it make you think that the guy that produces that broadcast is one of the former guests on the Pat Mayo experience. The guy that I used to sit next to at fantasy that we used to sit next to has been on the show has helped produce this show back when it was at fantasy. And he has basically just taken the cut sweats live model and applied it at a bigger network. And it's actually working. That doesn't surprise me. I I think this is a very viable idea that should be the second screen experience for most people. And I'm glad that drew is in a position right now where he has influence to make stuff like like that happen. I mean, that that guy who watches along like Leaf Superfan guy, could be, he's the fucking biggest goober in the world. But people seem to love him. I remember the day he asked uh, Gabe what the Titans had to trade to the Oilers to get Eddie George, not knowing that they had moved Never. from Houston. And I thought Gabe was going to run out of the room. Screaming. He also claims Richard Gere's his favorite actor, but he'd never seen Primal Fear, so <laughs> he's just an interesting cat. But we like him. He's yeah, we can, we love Drew. Shout out Drew. <laughs> Drew, I can appreciate those takes. Drew has been moved up in the world since he had to sit next to us, Jeff. Now he's a big time producer getting stuff yeah, on at actual the big, TV. At the big network and the big tower on Mount Pleasant. Yeah, good for him. Good for him. <laughs> so shout out Drew. Uh, that'll do it on the Pat Mayo experience. I thought this would go 15 minutes and of course it went 50. Um, I think the full turn is they end up being partners at the Ryder Cup. Oh, you think this works in like a reverse rocker situation? <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, exactly. We get to October, September, and and they're they're coming out of the tunnel together, <laughs> with with U.S. flags draped over themselves, taken apart, whistling straights. Yeah, exactly, like the Bash Brothers. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. The second part of this audio podcast will be coming up right after this. If you're watching the video version, that's going to be the end of this episode. Tune in on Thursday with Preston Johnson and Quan Young. We're talking NFL. We're talking NBA and just a little bit of this Brooks stuff. But they don't really care about golf. So I had to call up two golf guys who, you know, I talk to on a regular basis about this stuff. Hope you enjoyed. Smash the like. Tune in tomorrow. And that'll do it for me. Thanks for watching. I'm Pat Mayo. I'll see you next time. Fantastic. How's golf yesterday? Tim beat me by a shot. Whatever you, he's played a lot more than you, so I think that's a win. No, I, I'm not like Tim. I don't call. I was say I would take that as a win if it were me, but I don't think he will. No, I, I don't. Mean I, like I don't you t- didn't win, but I mean, like for the first match out, like it feels like you'll be beating him by game two. Ah, lost by- it, it's weird. No matter how well I'm playing or how well he's playing, I mean, I do normally beat him, but it's always a struggle back and forth. Usually, he melts down. He tried to give me the win on the 18th hole, and it didn't happen for me. I just played too horribly. Well, that's the best. I had to make that putt, and I made it. Well, great. You you have a buddy. Have a buddy who you can play like straight up and know like who the hell knows how this is going to. I was making some putts yesterday that were frustrating. Oh my god! Cuss strokes gain putting must have been like plus seven. (laughs) 
He was like, he, he made four putts from outside 30 feet. Shut up. Oh, yeah. Man. I was, I was dialed in. There it is. Congrats. That's awesome, Tim. Good stuff. All right, Jess. Awesome. I enjoyed that. All right. Yeah, talk soon. See ya. Bye. Experience!